So I've been having fun with the little motors here. I kind of wanted just to uh, make sure I knew how to, uh, how to drive them and uh, see what their torque was. I was especially interested in the torque of this little one here that I just found recently. I'd already known about these. Um, I've had these for a while. Haven't found a good project for it yet, but someday I will. And uh, now that I've added these to my collection, don't have a project for it, but someday I will. <laughs> and it's super tiny and it has that little uh, lead screw in there. It's actually a, a what's called a, a triple, triple start um, thread. And so it's a very, very fast thread. Uh, to do the uh, to do the motion, so it's kind of interesting. Anyway, super tiny, and I uh, showed uh, my last video. I'll, I'll put a link down below. Uh, my last video that showed how to drive these things, these four four wire stepper motors, and I figured out what voltage they are, and I figured out how much current they require, and figure out what type of step pattern they require to make them go. So uh, the next step is to do an Arduino project, of course. So yesterday I built this thing. Uh, I didn't uh, I didn't film it, but uh, it's got uh, two H bridges. Okay, so for the two different windings, and it's got the little motor here. I've got it glued down to a piece of uh, uh, PCB, um, and I added a little limit switch. So the little uh, follower here will will go down and it'll it'll touch the switch here. So uh, I, I decided to write a little simple program for it. Uh, I've got a little um, Arduino, what are they, mini, mini pros? I don't use those for anything, so I just stuck one of those on there. And uh, let me hook it up to a battery here. There we go, oh, there we go. you can see it move. Uh, so the program just steps down until it hits that limit switch, and then it goes in the opposite direction a certain number of counts, and then it repeats. Uh, so this is like, you know, robotics, uh, you know, 101 or robotics 001. Uh, this is kind of the, the most simple application of robotics is to control a motor. And um, then to be able to get some uh, real world feedback. So this is a real world sensing and actuation and uh, using uh, hardware to, to drive it and then writing a program. All right. So. Uh, the nice thing about all this is, 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 is I'm able to uh, power it off of uh, just a, a battery pack. <laughs> so uh, it's really easy to do development. Uh, the motor doesn't take much current, so I can just, I can just hook this up to the uh, computer and do all of my development. And it's, it's self-powering, so, so, that's, so that's really nice. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's about all that does. <laughs> Let, let's let's take a quick look at the program. So, if you know all about, all about Arduinos, please tune out. This will be boring. Uh, but uh, uh, we will start out by uh, creating some variables. Um, in the future, I, I was going to have a direction. I was going to have uh, you know clockwise uh, as zero and counterclockwise as one. This program does not use this variable. It's just there as a placeholder. It does use the speed variable. That's how how fast between pulses the things occur. The next thing you need to define in Arduino is the pinout. So uh, nine, eight, seven, six, and five. What does that mean? Well, on the Mini Pro, there's numbers on the on the board here, nine, eight, seven, six, five. They're kind of tiny here, but um, can we can we see them? Maybe uh, is it my 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 uh, magnifier lens is dirty. Anyway, there's numbers on the board. Those are the pins of the Arduino: pin nine, pin eight, pin seven, pin six, and pin five. So four of them are for the motor, and one of them is for the uh, is for the limit switch. Okay. So, so here they are defined, and these are not variables. These are just uh, director uh, compiler, compiler directives. Um, define limits. It's going to go on pin five, and then uh, we're going to define a group. That's the number of steps. When it hits the limit switch, how many steps up does it take before it starts coming down again? And I have it set to 240. Um, and then we need to say what we're going to do. We're going to use uh, motors zero through three as outputs. And so you need to define those. And that sets the uh, microcontroller to set those pins as output devices. And then we're going to set uh, uh, the limit pin as an input. And not only any old input, but an input with a pull-up. So I don't have to have a pull-up on my PC board. It includes its own pull-up. I think it's 10K or something like that. But it, it, it adds its own pull-up, so you don't need to have them on the uh, on the circuit board, which is really nice. 
And then I'm going to have some initial state, so I'm just going to set all of these pins to their high state, which puts the motor into tri-state on both windings. And then here's the main, uh, the main loop. Uh, we are going to go down first. And so remember we had that funny sequence that was uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so that's what this is doing. It's, it's, setting, it's setting this pin uh, low. Okay, and that will energize the motor to that one state. And then we're going to wait. And then we're going to put it back high, but then, but then change the next pin to low. Wait. And then we just continue on that. And this sequence gives you the go down, the step sequence to go down. So that's, that's very easy. And then at the very bottom of the loop here, this is an infinite loop. It, it's going to check the limit switch. So it's going to say if. Uh, we're going to digitally read the limit switch. So if the if the switch is zero, which means it's been pressed, because um, it's to ground, the switch goes to ground. Normally it's a pull up, so it's high. And then if you if you close the switch, it pulls it to ground, which makes a zero. So if it's zero, then we are going to uh, move up, and we're going to move up uh, a, a group number of times. Okay, which is that 240, and then we're going to go through the. Uh, A lot of stuff, piece of paper here. We're going to go through that routine, except the sequence is opposite of the first sequence, so it goes in the up direction instead of the down direction. And that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll post the code down below. Um, and you get yourself a little motor that goes up and down and up and down. And it's just a fun test vehicle to uh, kind of see how much torque I can. Uh, Let's see, I get my finger out of the way here. I can go uh, kind of push on this thing. I can kind of feel how much how much power it's got in it. I can I can get it to stall. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's got quite a bit of little torque in it. It's not too bad. Now that motor's kind of getting a little bit warm. Let's measure it. Um, I have a uh, non-contact thermometer here, so let's see if we can get, measure that motor there. Uh, it's 35C. Uh, a little bit warm. If you, you put your finger on it, it uh, you can feel it's warm. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> it gets warm. Yeah. 35C. So I say you probably don't want to run this motor for too long of a period. I think that's a bit warm. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, it is, like I said, it is getting warm. But if you're just uh, if you're just actuating to a certain point and then putting the motor again in tri-state, it won't draw any current and it won't heat up. So I think that's probably a good use for this motor is to uh, change change to a, to a spot and then just go tri-state because the uh, the gear reduction and the uh, and everything I think there'll be enough of mechanical uh, you know stiction or whatever you want to call it. There'll be enough mechanical uh, uh, there to to hold whatever you're what you're interested in. Or maybe you just want it to uh, go push a button every once in a while. I don't know.